Okay, guys, I hope you're ready for this next segment. Kick off your shoes, grab your yoga mat, roll it on out. We're going to start right here for the wall sit. So find your nearest wall once you've got your mat set. Put your back against it. Walk your feet out. You want your feet right underneath your knees. Okay, you might have to kind of look at yourself sideways. Now the cool thing about a wall sit is you have all the control. You could sit higher. You could sit with your thighs parallel to the ground. But what you want to make sure of is there's no pressure in the knees. So if you just did that previous segment, your quads are already on fire here. If not, here this is your warm up. So dig your heels. Push the balls of the feet too. So it's that nice even balance. Now pull your belly in. Okay. Roll the shoulders so you feel wide across the um, across the wall. Whoop. Catching myself on my tree. Keep that squeeze of your belly. And if you notice, there's a little pocket of air right behind your low back. Okay, you want that there. That's what your spine actually does. It has that little curve in, that lordosis. What we're gonna play with, with is some standing core work. You're gonna pull your belly in and flatten your back against the wall. You might have felt a little something down below too. And then breathe in, breathe into your belly. Let it expand. Back knees away from the wall. Hug your belly in. Okay, I'm just showing you things with my hands. You don't have to do any hand movement here. Feel that inhale expanding you. Exhale, everything hugs in. This is a great move to do if you're expecting or even postpartum. You don't have to do it against a wall in a wall sit. You could be sitting against a wall. You just think about the idea of hugging in. Inhale. And if my breath pace is too fast or slow for you, you do you, right? Find yours. What is nice to do is try to get your breath to be a little slower than you're used to. All right, I'm talking here a lot about the breath and the abs, pretending all the while that nothing's happening down in our legs, which are burning right now, I know. You got one more focus on the abs. Hug it, keep that squeeze of your tummy. Now from here, lift one heel, doesn't matter which one, lower it, and then lift the other. So you're going to feel the quads kick on a little more. Switch your heel, lower it, and switch your heel. Now lower it, lift the other heel, and hold. Just hold right here. If you're slipping, walk your feet back a little bit. Maybe take the arms along the wall. Maybe a cactus if you're feeling tight in your neck or your shoulders. Or you can keep your hands in your abs. You can keep that heel lifted or extend your leg. Keep breathing big. For some reason, it helps you get through this stuff if you just smile. Smile and breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in one more. Oh, put that foot down. So push everything you got into one heel. Lift the opposite heel. Holding. And breathing. Huge breath in. Huge breath out. And then squeeze your abs. That's why it works. Because you need them if you want to add that leg lift. So maybe lift the leg. Maybe the arms are down. Maybe they're up. Maybe they're in, wherever they need to be, but breathe. Stick with it. It's just muscle burn. It's just those muscles getting stronger, stronger, stronger. Embrace it. One more big breath. All right, step backwards toward the wall and slowly emerge. Good news, we're getting right down onto that mat. So stand towards the front of your mat. Just inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, take the hands, reach them back, interlace them. Heels of the hands together, so like your wrists. Big breath here, you can stay, but take a fold. Just folding right over. Don't force it. Don't feel like you have to get your head towards your feet. No, just let it feel good. If you're breathing and you're just working mindfully, you're good. Now, a little more weight to the balls of the feet might help you. A little more bend to the knees might help as well. Just keep your head hanging. Breathe into your back. Exhale, let the arms go over, not literally over your head, but overhead a little more. And then gently take the hands down to your hips, down your legs. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And then exhale, you're going to step yourself back into your plank position. Just holding your plank, maybe come onto your knees. You can even pull your heels to your seat in this little plank. We're not here for very long but that's gonna stretch your quads a little bit. Taking a generous inhale, generous exhale, and then you can lower all the way down to the floor and flip onto your back or just kind of get there. However you wanna get there, 
lowering down slowly. And then once you're there, just flip right over onto your back. Now you're going to want to have um, yourself in a position where your feet can easily slide. So make sure that you've got that. Now from here, walk your feet close to your seat. Take your hands right on your low abdominals, so below your belly button, and pull your belly down. Now take your left foot, slide it out. Slide it, you're going to feel a little resistance there. Slide it all the way straight and push your leg down to the ground. Notice what you feel. Okay, if you feel like sort of a tugging sensation, that's about right. But your low belly, keep it pulling into the floor. Notice what's happening under your back. Try to keep your low back flattening into the floor. When your deepest hip flexor, which is called your psoas, when it's tight, your back wants to pop off the floor. So just note what's going on here. But we're going to work to release that psoas. Using your low abdominals, you're going to lift your left leg straight up. You can bend it a little if you need to. And then take your shin, bring it to a tabletop position. Keeping the low belly in the whole time, just put that foot back down. And we'll do it on the other side. So you're going to keep the squeeze of your belly. Stretch your right leg along the floor. Keep it there. Push your thigh down. Keep your low back flat into the floor. So you feel a tug. It's not going to be a sensation of like a burn that you get when you do crunches. That's not smart to get a flat low belly and a strong deep core. Keep your ribs anchored. Take a breath. Exhale, belly down even more, float your leg up. And then re-bend your knee. This is with control. You're using your core to stabilize you and put your foot down. All right, here you go. Left leg slides. Lift it up. Bend and lower. So it's almost like you're creating a gigantic circle. Notice as you're doing this, what happens as you move? Do your hips sort of shudder? Does your low back pop? Are you feeling there's a moment where your belly wants to release? Chances are you're doing this like no one else is around. Put your hands on your tummy. Feel in there, press into the flesh, and feel for when your abdominals kind of push back. You don't want them to. You want your abs to hug away from your hands. So if you're not used to working the deep core, the transverse abdominis, which is that muscle that wraps around you like a corset, you might want to just stick with this. Otherwise, we're going to change it after this next one. All right. From here, you're going to take your left leg, interlace your hands behind it, stretch your right leg long. Now push your thigh into your hands. As you do that, pull your belly away from your shirt, right? Pull it down to the floor. So you're scooping your low belly up. Now keep pushing your thigh into your hands. Keep pulling the belly in. If your neck is feeling fine today, option to curl into yourself. So you're now working not only your deepest abdominals, but the surface abs, your rectus abdominis, the six back muscles, to create this spinal flexion. So really anchor your ribs down, shoulders loosey-goosey, maybe float your leg up. This is very Pilates-esque. Keeping that squeeze. Now, you can probably see your low belly here. Give it the good stare down. Make sure it stays in. Maybe play with reaching your right hand forward. Belly still in. All right, maybe see if you can reach your left hand. If the belly just kind of went whoop and jolted, grab your thigh again. Okay, it's not a sign of weakness. It's not how far you go. It's how deep you go. And literally deep means in, your belly into the body. So just holding here, and then we're going to go swapping back and forth, flushing it out a little bit. Feel good. Maybe you're shaking, that's good. Pull your belly in, and then slowly lower down. You're going to tap one shin with your hands, other shin with your hands. Light little tap, keeping your knee as far away from you as you can manage. Low belly, still pulling in. The legs can be higher or lower, but you want to make sure low belly is in. Low back doesn't come off the floor. Switch. Switch. Maybe lift up higher. Good. Keeping that anchoring of your ribs, that deep squeeze. And I know you want to go faster, but we're not. Because faster is easier. Faster is momentum. Momentum never made change in the body. Actually, momentum usually just injures the body, so be smart. All right, now grab the back of your right thigh, lower down. 
push your thigh into your hands. Shoulders are away from the ears. Jaw is relaxed, neck is relaxed. Inhale to your belly. Exhale, squeeze your belly to the floor. And then maybe push your thighs so much you curl into yourself. So you're anchoring your ribs down. Shoulders still melted. Okay, notice I can talk to you here. I'm not ripped and killing muscle. So maybe playing with that leg height. Everybody needs something different. But you're squeezing your tummy. Maybe reach the left hand. You can keep the low abdominals hugging down. Maybe reach the right. Holding here. The breath can be shallow. That's okay. Doesn't have to be huge. It's hard to breathe when you're in a deep abdomen. But emphasize the strength of your exhale. All right, let's go back to those little shin taps. Maybe this time we'll pick up the pace as long as you find the pause. Pause. Okay? You liked it slower, you know you have that option. You can also lie all the way down. Plenty of options. It's all a matter of picking what you need. And I mean that. Take what you need, leave the rest. It's always like a buffet. Okay, five more, four, and then we're gonna go boat pose to get on out of this. All right, now grab the backs of both thighs, lay your head down, take a breath. Exhale, pull your belly down, curl the tailbone up a little. Now push your thighs into your hands. So it's a different way of getting there. Curl into yourself. This is just like we did a moment ago, hugging that thigh, but now both thighs, shoulders down. If you want, you can roll back and then up to get into your boat pose. Otherwise, pushing into your thighs, squeezing into your tummy. As soon as you can, lift your spine tall. Now for boat pose, a lot of misalignments here is we end up kind of on the sacrum, right? You roll back into the spine. No matter what, lift your spine tall. Shoulders nice and relaxed, wide open heart. And then your shins. Put them where it's challenging for you to work your core in, but you're able to pull your abs in and your hip flexors aren't killing you. So maybe the shins can come higher. If you're not sure what's going on with your abs, you can always put a hand there. Right, just feel it out, belly in. Nice open heart. And just like we did with the releasing of the hands when we were on the ground with our box, see what it's like to release the hands. But if you felt your belly pop and you kind of reeled back and everything got grippy and tight, don't release the hands. And those of you who have really open hamstrings, if you want to straighten your legs all the way, that's fine. But here's what usually happens for most people when they do that. Ah, right, they pitch back. So if you can keep the spine straight and straighten the legs, fine. But don't force it. It's not going to help you get any deeper, better, or stronger. It's just going to get you out of alignment. Probably get you angry in the hip flexors. So hold where you need to hold. It's about 10 more seconds. Focus the exhale into low belly. One more. Strong exhale. All right, take the soles of your feet together and just sit into a cobbler's pose real quick. Don't force the knees down. Let them just go where they go. And then grow your spine tall out of your hips. And then take a little hinge. Just the littlest hinge goes a long way. If you want to go further, that's fine. But make sure that you're going with length. You're going by creating space in your body. You're not forcing it, you're not rounding. Okay, we do this posture plan eight in life. Let's counteract that. Keep you nice and long, nice and open. All right, from here, we're gonna get a little more upper body while we're working our core. We're gonna set up for a plank position. I recommend starting this out on your knees. You can also use the service of a chair or countertop and push down on it to work these push-ups. called renegade push-ups. I just learned these. They're awesome. Take your legs wide. So whether you're on your knees or your feet, your wrists are beneath your shoulders, use your fingertips. Hug the elbows. Nice long neck. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to lower down. Squeeze your belly to lift. Row one elbow. Row the other elbow. Lower down. Squeeze to lift. Row the other elbow, right? So alternating. All right, just two more of these. Then we're adding on. So really feel the squeeze. The trick is to not let your hips shift. All right, so if you think you want to try it with your feet, let your feet to your knees lifted. Lift your knees. Maybe walk the feet a little wider. We're going to add a side plank in between sides, okay? So you're going to lower down. Lift. Row, 
row, and now you're going to roll onto the outside of your right foot, left hand comes up, and you're in a side plank, and then come back down, take another one, rowing, rowing, and now roll onto the outside of your left foot, stacking your feet, reaching up, and then coming down. Now, you can still do this on your knees, okay? Don't feel like that I'm taking you somewhere that you don't want to go. I won't leave you hanging. If you're doing it on your knees, you're literally just flopping onto your shin. One leg could stay straight. Okay? Let it be fairly intuitive. Taking your push-up. Lifting with your core. Taking your row. Taking your row. And I'm just kind of taking on over, reaching up. All right, here is your last one. And then we're going to take our side plank and hold it. Now, roll into the outside of your foot, reach up, hold. So if you want to take your shin down for your side plank, leg long, you can do that. You're working this side plank. The eye of your elbow, okay, should be pointing in line with your middle finger. It's going to be an external rotation for your upper arm. What that does is it stabilizes your shoulder. You can float your leg. Okay, you yogis out there, if you want to do anything fancy, like tree pose or grabbing your big toe, okay, I can't stop you. It's always fun to play. Squeeze your side abs, one more breath. And then right to the other side. We're going right into that side plank. Shoulders are away from the ears. Your hips are right in line with your shoulders. You can reach, you can touch your abs, make sure they're hugging in. Maybe float your leg. Woo. Lifting. So there's your side seat working to lift the leg, along with your side abs. Big inhale. Big exhale. One more, just like that. Stay with it. And then from here, back to your plank. Okay, we're going to lower all the way down into our belly. So lowering down slowly. And then from here, it's your mat, I hope. So put your forehead down on it. Reaching the arms back. You're going to lift everything you got up. We're going to do a nice flying locust. So really lift everything up. Just lift. All right, now while you're here, not lifting so high, you feel it in your low back. Pull your belly up into the small of your back. Reach your legs long. Stretch and feel your triceps turn on. Long neck. So notice if you're doing anything funny with your head, keep your neck long. Reaching long with your legs, feeling this in your hamstrings, not squeezing your butt. Your glutes will be on, but you're not going to squeeze them because that will compress your SI joint. Not fun, promise you. Holding here. Squeeze your tummy tighter. Take one more breath. And exhale, lowering down. Turn your head to one side. Woo. And we'll breathe there. Big inhale. Breathe into the ground like it's part of you. And exhale, everything away. Let's lift back up. Squeeze your tummy. Inhale, lift up. So reach the arms. Reach your legs. You can draw the legs closer toward each other. Feel the inner thighs go to the ceiling. By the way, your palms face down. So at the head of the arm bone, right where we think of as our shoulders, you want it to roll away from your chest. Palms up and your shoulders are going to roll in. So palms down, peel your heart open. Big inhale. And exhale, lower down, turn your head the other way. Okay. Re-emphasize your breath. And one more, okay? So turn the palms down, forehead down, belly tight, reach long with your legs, lifting up. So think of it, yeah, it's a bit of a spinal extension. It's a lot of a spinal extension. It's a bit of a back bend, but use the hamstrings. Use the base of the seat. Lengthen your legs. The more you reach, the higher you will get in a smart way. One more breath. And then make a pillow right underneath your head. Rock the hips a little bit side to side. Walk the legs closer to each other. Now, you're going to swim your legs. Really simple. Lift your left leg a little, then lift your right leg higher. And switch. Alternate slowly. So think that this is the kind of swimming that if you went at this pace, you would drown. But it's deeper. Because fast, it's just going to wobble you into your low back. You probably won't feel much. So we're in the hamstrings. Face the seat. A few more here, then we're going to hit up that side seat a little bit. So while you're working this, now I'm only lifting my head so I can talk to you. You should have your head happily down. Pull your belly in. 
switch it up. All right, just a couple more here. Big inhale, big exhale. And then pause. You're gonna lower down, take your knees wide and click your heels together. Your toes can do whatever you want, but really squeeze your heels, press your pelvis down. Kind of like cobbler's pose, but we're upside down. Now, squeeze your heels so much, you feel like you can push them a little bit to the ceiling. So your thighs just get kind of light on the floor. We're actually not gonna go this way, because that tends to get the low back. You're going to think of your knees going out to the sides of your mat. Just out. Little in, big out. 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 So you're right in that side glute. Get the squeeze there. You can reach back and feel it, right? Your head is down. Your core is on. You just feel that good squeeze. Out. Out. If you want your legs to lift higher, you can do that but make sure you have no aggravation in your low back. Just tiny taps out. You have a lot of front body. We've done side seat already, okay? We did that first segment. And we've done quads. But we wanna balance everything out. Your core is not just your abs. Your glutes and the erectors of your spine, major, major core muscles. Anything that stabilizes your pelvis and helps lengthen your spine, that's part of your core. Big inhale. All right, we're not here for very long, so I need you to go for that burn. You want to lift the legs a little higher. Now is the time. You're not thinking about the in, just the out. Out. Squeeze the heels tighter. We've only got five more from here, then a little pause. If your low back is bothering you, move your heels further away. Hold here. You can keep squeezing your heels to your seat, lifting, or straighten your legs. Widen your knees wherever they are. And maybe revisit the arms reaching back. Final touch, we're stretching it out after this. Belly tight, big inhale. And exhale, hands come down. You could push straight up into a plank or just pull yourself back into a child pose slowly, slowly. If you feel that when you're transitioning into this child's pose, your entire low back went, ugh, you probably were lifting your legs too high. We've all done it, it's not a big deal. All right, keeping the arms in front or reach them down by your shins. It's quite nice. And let your neck go. Maybe give yourself a little massage. Always nice. All right, and then pull yourself up. We're going to come into a pigeon stretch. In all honesty, you could go from right here just pulling your knee forward. But a lot of times what we do in yoga is from down dog, we'll start on the right side. So lift your right leg into the air. Open the hip and bend your knee. It's the same position we just had for that leg when we were on the floor. Now swing your right knee towards your right wrist. Get your right foot out from underneath you and slide on back. So your hips are going to be level. Your abs are going to be tight. I'm getting a phone call here. And then make sure that if you have a big space right through here, you don't sit on over into it. Okay? It would be even better if you had a pillow or something you could put under there. Okay? But you want to keep the hips level. If your hips are easily down and you're nice and even, start to work that front shin a little more parallel to the front of your mat. Now hug your abs in here. So stretches are still active. You're using your core to support you. Tent your fingertips and start to lengthen out to your happy place. So stretches should feel good. But if you want to increase your flexibility, a stretch shouldn't be overly comfortable. It should be kind of like, oh, I don't really want to stay here, but I'm going to breathe my way into it to sustain it. There's nothing negative. Nothing feels like it's ripping, popping, pulling. It's all good. And you're breathing big. If you want to let your head go, that's fine. But if you're all rounded out, not so good. You can make a little support for your hands. You can stack your fists and make a headrest. But notice how you probably mentally are getting fidgety. That's okay. Take a big breath with me. Exhale, whatever tension you feel in your hip, your neck, your hands, your face, your brain, exhale it away. Make that active choice. Big inhale. Strong, long exhale. Taking a few more breaths right there. We're just going to change up our tunes a little bit. Yeah, we're just chilling it out. Hard part's over. Now let's be just as mindful getting out of this. Gently walk yourself out. 
okay? What we're going to do to get out of it is you're going to sit off onto your right hip. Sit off to the side, and then swing your left leg all the way around, okay? Now, if you feel like you're kind of stuck back here on your tailbone, if you have a pillow, it'd be great to sit on it. You kind of have to sit on it so you get your pelvis level. If not, bend your knees, keep the flex of your foot, move the flesh of your seat a bit, grab the back of your calf, lift tall. And then lengthening forward so you feel a little stretch in your hamstring. And slowly work to straighten your leg. The minute you feel like you're pulling backwards into your back, you've gone too far. If you're A-OK -okay, sitting on those sitting bones, you can still grab your calf. I recommend grabbing your calf, not your foot. Okay, and here's why. Unless you are like dancer, gymnast, or yogi, you go to grab your foot, spine rounds, shoulders shrug, all sorts of misalignments happen. If you're holding your shin, your calf, you can lift yourself tall. You want to stretch with a long spine. Eventually, when your belly is touching your thigh, okay, that now takes your low back out of the picture, you can let yourself go a little bit more. But that's never the goal. The goal is to create space and length in the body. So do that really hard mental thing where you just kind of set your ego aside, turn off autopilot, and be present with your breath in your body just for day. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then from here, you can swing both legs behind you again. Let's come back either onto all fours or into down dog. And then take your left leg up and back if you're in down dog. Open the hip and bend your knee. And then swing your knee through. Get your foot a little bit out from underneath you so you don't, you don't want to land on your foot. It's a little out of the way. Your left knee should be angled off to the side. And then just draw your left hip back. I've got my back toes curled. I don't know if you can see them, but it's to help me really square the hips and keep the legs straight back. And then I flatten the foot. Maybe propping up something underneath your left hip if there's space there. You're settling down. You're engaging your abs. And then walking yourself right out. Maybe onto your forearms. Maybe you keep the fingertips down. These active triceps. That little pillow, but explore it, breathe it, and notice it's going to change. As we hold this and stick with it, I know you want to get out. I've been there. Breathe. So just inhale up your spine, feel like your spine grows longer. Exhale, feel whatever tension is surrounding you, it just melts. It helps to close your eyes. I'll talk you through it. Just breathe in, create space in your hips. Exhale, feel softness. So even though there's tightness, you're breathing it away. One more breath here. And then slowly pick yourself back up. Sit off onto your hip and swing that leg around. So it's coming straight out. I'll face you guys this time. Coming straight out in front of you, moving the flesh of your seat, lifting tall. And remember, if you feel like you're stuck, you're going to bend your knee. Move the flesh of your seat again. Grab the back of your calf or your thigh. Just hinge forward a bit. Start to straighten your leg. Doesn't have to straighten all the way. But if you're good to go and you just want to work into that forward fold, spine is long. Imagine someone taking your hand and sliding it up your back to lengthen you. And exhale, just giving you a little nudge forward and down. Shoulders melt. So a lot of these stretches that we do towards the end of the yoga class are forward folds. We don't call them downward folds. So you really think forward. Big inhale. Exhale. Breathing in, maybe backing out of the stretch. And exhaling into it. Last time. And exhale. From here, just sitting yourself in a comfortable cross-legged seat. Move the flesh of your seat. If sitting cross legged is uncomfortable, just sit or stand, whoever it is. Or just notice what you feel. Take your fingertips down, down beside you. Inhale, gather up all of the energy of what you just did. And exhale, let it just surround you, filling you with all that positivity, all that strength, that focus. Inhale, gather it up. And exhale, let go of anything you don't need. Okay, just making that active choice to let go. Inhale, just inspiring yourself. 
With strength and focus and balance, exhale away. Another breath right here. Awesome job. Thanks for joining me today. As always, if you've got questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Just give a little post in the comments below.